Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another um, segment, weekly segment of Condo Insider. We're so happy to um, have with us Keanu Young, who is with the Legislative Reference Bureau, off, all commonly known as LRB, um, down at the state capitol. So he's going to explain to us what the LRB, and then they also have another section called um, public access room, which is so helpful We're in your, when you're in that legislative session period and you're looking at hearings or bills being introduced, they're so helpful down there. So um, Keanu, I wanna thank you and, um, <clears throat> and, your, and Virginia also for agreeing to be um, on the show today. And it's a great um, time point because the legislative session should be starting very shortly, right? Correct. Um, so it's a great timing to get everybody in gear on how the legislative process works and how they can support um, all their all their um, their representatives and senators on um, getting bills done or not done, whichever the case might be. But we as citizens should be participating in that legislative process. Um, that's our um our right as US, as Americans, right? To participate in this process. So I'm gonna turn it over to Keanu and he's gonna do some intros. Okay, thanks for being, thanks for having us today. Um, just talking about a little bit about the public access room or LRB. Uh, we are a nonpartisan service agency at the Capitol. Uh, we're part of the legislative branch of government in our state, along with the legislature and the offices of the auditor and the ombudsman. Um, LRB was established in 1943 when we were still a territory to provide research for the governor, the legislature, and various departments. And then in 1972, it was transferred over to the legislative branch where we are now. There are five divisions of the Legislative Reference Bureau. We have the research division. They introduce a lot of, um, not introduce, they draft a lot of the bills that are introduced during session and also um, conduct reports that are requested by the legislature and serve as um, if the legislature needs something, um, they, they can help them with that. We also have the statute revision division, and they uh, incorporate all the newly passed acts into our 14 volumes of our state's permanent law, um, the Hoya Rice statutes. Um, there's the LRB systems office, and they create a lot of the reports that come out during session, um, including a lot of the statistics. So if people wanted to know how many bills are introduced and how many bills passed, uh, that's actually done by the systems office. And then we have the LRB library downstairs in the Capitol basement. And they are a legislative library that has lots of um, legislative documents and some that go back to the, uh, the days when Hawaii was still a kingdom. And so they're a good um, place to go for research. Um, the legislature's website only goes back to 1999. So if people are looking for documents that predate that, uh, they can give the LRB library a call and talk to their research librarians and get help with that. And then the public access room, uh, which I'm gonna talk about. Uh, we are the fifth division. Uh, we were established in 1989 to improve uh, public access to legislative information um, and to provide the public with necessary resources for participation in the legislative process. Uh, we are originally staffed and supported by community volunteers from public interest organizations, such as the League of Women Voters and Common Cause Hawaii. And then in 1994, PAR was made permanent by Act 259 uh, as part of a permanent public access program offering year-round staff and services. Then in 1996, uh, we became a division of the Le Legislative Reference Bureau. So our primary responsibility is to enhance the public's ability to participate in the legislative process. Uh, civic participation, citizen participation is an integral part of our representative democracy. And if the public ceases to participate, then our government will cease to be a democracy. Um, public participation, Participation helps to ensure that our representative system of government is healthy and maintained. Um, so a lot of people don't understand how the legislature works or how they can actually get involved with the legislature. Um, and so that's where we come in. You know, if citizens have resources and an understanding on how to add their voices to the process, they're more, more likely to get involved. And so that's our, that's, our, that's our role in this process. And if you knew nothing about the legislative process, you could come to the public access room and we'd be able to help you understand how bills become law, help you on, um, to uh, focus at your advocacy efforts. Um, we produce lots of material, lots of informational material. Um, we are also nonpartisan, so we help people from you know, different, um, on different policy issues. We don't get involved in politics 
uh, or the policy part of government restricted process people. Um, and we're always happy to help. So we do have an office on the fourth floor of the Capitol in room 401, um, but the Capitol building is closed right now. And I think the legislature is looking at opening the Capitol building uh, prior to the most recent surge uh, in the COVID-19 numbers. So um, we're gonna maintain, um, we're gonna continue to be closed for now. Um, and then I think they're gonna to reevaluate, House and Senate leadership are gonna reevaluate um, whether or not they can open uh, in, in the next coming, in the, I guess in the next uh, few weeks or so. So um, we are still available via email or by phone. We get a lot of calls during the day, uh, people asking us about questions about the, in the legislative process and um, when bills are gonna start to be introduced and how they can sign up for hearing notifications and measure tracking lists. Um, and so we're already pretty busy. Uh, people also contact us via email and we have a social media presence on Facebook and Twitter where we also put out a lot of information. So um, that's pretty much what we do. Um, prior to the pandemic, we would reach out and branch out in the fall and go take our office and our office resources out to the communities, uh, communities across the state, including the neighbor islands. Um, but COVID pretty, pretty much shut that part of our, um, of our work down. So we're primarily now um, um, you know, doing presentations via Zoom, but this also allows us to do a lot more presentations because we're in the office and we're not driving around or flying uh, to the other parts of uh, the state. Um, I was on the website and um, you guys have a lot of archived information too. Yeah. So if someone wanted, is, is there a charge to get some of the PDF of archived information? Because it can't uh, there... charge. So I was like, is there a charge for that? Yeah, no, there's not. And so on the, um, you're talking about the legislature's website. There is an archives page that goes back to uh, 1999 where people can access documents. Um, bills there were introduced a certain year and committee reports and testimony. As you go back further to the early, um, you know, 2000s, not all the information is there, but I think after 2012, um, you know, you should be able to access a lot of those documents. There's not a fee for, um, for that. You, people can... Um, access that information online. Um, and then whatever we don't have available on the website, um, people can check with the LRB library or call the Hawaii State Archives. Um, and they have should have copies of, you know, legislative documents, including committee reports and testimony for certain hearings. It was very easy to navigate. Um, and I was playing around, you know, and I was like, okay, what's here? And I was like, wow, this is really cool. It was it was really easy to navigate and find stuff. It, you know? it is. Um, it is easy. Um, um, I think it's easy for Virginia and myself because we've been using the website to find information, um, and we're good at it. Um, we <laughs> we created we uh, Virginia created a, a website guide that is really helpful. It talks um, about the features on the website, but it is a, a very user friendly website. And a couple years ago, it was. Um, received an award for being the best website in the country. So um, the, uh, it's an NCL, uh, NCSL award. So it is a, a, a good um, website. And we always try to look for ways that we, in which we can make it better. Um, so the website is actually managed by the Senate data systems. And so, um, you know, we work with data systems to figure out how we can make uh, information a little bit more accessible or maybe, um, you know, have, have some of the features be, um, easier to use, but um, so people can call us if they're having problems finding things and we'll tell them exactly where they can go. That's cool. So um, let's pull up the um, the PowerPoint that shows the, the path of a bill. Okay. Um, so this is something that we created um, that kind of walks people through the steps on how a bill becomes law. There's certain things that have to happen for a bill to become law in the state of Hawaii. And the bill has to be introduced by a legislator um, during session. Um, and in Hawaii, in the state of Hawaii, bills are only introduced like for a one week period at the county levels at the federal level bills are introduced year round, but at the state level, it's a one week period where bills are introduced and that's usually from the opening day um, to about a week later so opening day is January 19th this year. Um, bill has to be introduced by a legislator, um, then it has to have three votes on the floor of each chamber at least three votes um, and make it through all the hearings that they are referred to. So there are kind of a lot of hurdles for bills to jump through. That's why each year out of the 3000 some odd bills that are introduced, only about seven to 11% or so actually become law. 
Um, but that's something that we created to kind of help people understand the visual part of lawmaking. So how do people, um, if they wanted to, um, if, they, if they caught the attention of a particular bill, how do they track the path of that bill? Um, so what, what, if once they find the bill, if I was looking for some, like a bill to keep track of, I'll identify the bill. Um, and then I would add it to a tracking list and they can do that online. And for people that are not familiar with that, please feel free to give us a call or email us and we'll work through, we'll work through that with you. Um, but I'll keep the, keep track of the bill. Um, and then just the, go to the bill status page and the bill status page will update every time something happens to the bill, like any new action um, for a lot of bills, they get introduced and they go through first reading, which is, you know, kind of. Part of, just part of the process and nothing else happens to them. Um, I think what happens for a lot of people is they don't understand when the bill is alive, like, you know, whether it's in good shape or bad shape. Um, we understand that based on um, the deadline that applies to it. And that is, you know, based on the number of referrals that a bill has. But, um, you know, we kind of use the bill status page on the legislature's website to keep track of it. So I know you can get an account um, or, or on the legislative website, you would create an account and then there's um, the little button on the bottom. So bill tracking, so you can put in all your bill numbers that you're interested in. Yeah. And get those track, get your email alerts. And then um, even committee, I mean, they get your hearing alerts too, right? Yes. On the bills. Um, so, so there's some interactive fun uh, features of the website and um, that allows people to submit testimony through the website, which is the preferred way um, to submit testimony to, to legislative committees. Um, they can sign up for hearing notifications. That means that if you find a bill that you want to keep track of and you want to be able to testify, if it gets scheduled for a hearing, you would sign up for a hearing notification. You just click, you, you type in the bill number um, it, within that feature. Um, and anytime that bill is scheduled for a hearing, you'll get noticed. And then you can also create a measure tracking list, which I do to just keep track of of a bill, um, you know, all the bills that you're following, just because uh, it produces a report. And so it's a one-stop shop kind of, you can see all the bills that you want to keep track of exactly where it, it is in the process. Um, and so it, you don't have to keep going through different pages on the website. You can see everything from one page. But, so if um, interested in a bill and um, they want to submit testimony, because I know a lot of times when you get that hearing notice, I mean, you have a short window to submit testimony. So I always try to people, I go, you need to prepare your testimony, at least a draft of it and have it available. And then when you kind of get the bill, it kind of more closer to its, you know, whatever amendments or changes, you can change your testimony accordingly. But the main be a gut of it is, is already drafted. You've already drafted it and you just got to kind of reread it and make small little changes, whatever, and you're ready to go. So. Is that what you kind of recommend to a lot of people as well? Uh, exactly. That's actually good advice that you're giving people. So what um, we usually tell people is when they identify bills that they're looking for, um, that they want to keep track of, you know, you guys are condo association bills. There's a lot of those types of bills that are introduced. Um, once you identify the bill um, and you want to, you, you're keeping track of it, you know, the bill number. So the first thing that we want to know is where the bill is going. Um, which committee it's referred to. And then once you find out which committee the bill is referred to, you can actually draft out your testimony to that committee, um, even though this is even before the bill is scheduled, just so you, like you said, you have it ready um, because it is a short period of time um, to submit testimony. Uh, hearing notices come in usually about 48 hours in advance of a hearing. Um, the Senate has anytime the first time a Senate committee hears a bill, they allow you 72 hours notice. But other than that, it's 48 hours. And then they'll ask for the testimony to come in um, at least 24 hours before the hearing. That, and that's just so mm -hmm. chairs and members of the committees have access to that testimony before the hearing starts. And so you may only have a day to submit testimony. That's why it's always uh, good to prepare beforehand. You get the hearing notice, then you don't have to work as hard um, to submit your testimony. The thing to remember is that um, if a bill passes out of the committee and it goes on to its next committee, you want to make sure that um, you're addressing that testimony to the, the committee that um, currently has it. And, you know, if they make any amendments to the bill, like you said, you want to make sure that 
your testimony addresses the current version of the bill. Um, but to, to use the interactive uh, features of the website, people actually have to register. And it's just a form fill. It's a pretty easy to fill form. And then once they're registered um, and have an account on the website, uh, they can submit testimony through the website, um, sign up for hearing notification, and then create measure tracking lists. So for everything else, you don't need to have an account, but to use the interactive features, you have to have an account um, on the website. Yeah, and the more you go to that legislative website, the more you familiar you get to it. I mean, in the beginning, it was kind of hard, and I'm like, okay, how do I do this again? You know, but the more frequent you get to it, and um, or you use it, then um, the easier it is get to to maneuver. You know, um, I just wish that it would be a better way to, like, five fourteen B. I literally got to cut and paste everything. <laughs> And that's like that's like a couple hours worth of work, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, that's got to be an easier way. <laughs> so that's all. It's it, the statutes are listed uh, on the website um, sections of statute. Um, we have the hard copy. Everybody, every legislative office has the hard copy volumes. Um, you know, so there's ways to if you're like trying to capture a lot of uh, um, statute. You know, if it's a big section, uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult. But the the, the good part is that it's online. Um, and the session laws are all online as well. So um, I think they just put the session laws in maybe last year or the year prior. Um, prior to that, you know, you, you wouldn't be able to see what acts were passed, um, you know, in 1974 or whatever, it's by um, going to the website. So that's something new that they put on. And that's been very helpful for people to keep track of stuff. If you're looking for information, um, you know, from years past. Yeah, even the ones that have passed and they're waiting governor's signature, now you can go to that governor's message page. Yeah. Right. And see that. Um, so which is pretty cool. So you really can follow it from start to in between and to its final form, you know, so which really makes it easier for um, our residents, our citizens of Hawaii to really get really involved. It's not as complicated as it seemed like it used to be before. Yeah. Um, um, and then, then people, the public also has the public access room. So uh, we are all, Virginia and I, and we have a session staffer, Ashley, who's working with us this session. Um, we are always eager to help um, people. So if, you know, anybody can feel free to give us a call if you're having problems navigating the website. We use the reports and list page on the website um, just because it's a really easy way to find information. Um, you can find all the bills that are introduced, resolutions that are introduced, um, bills that made it past certain deadlines. And as you mentioned, um, the bills that, you know, the acts that, you know, um, the bills that become acts and, and governor's messages and, you know, all, all kinds of information in different ways. So that's a really, really good page to go to. And that's the page that Virginia and I use a lot um, in answering questions that people have about, you know, fighting bills that are making its way through the process. So I can imagine at this time of year, would be pretty much like you you literally get no sleep because it's so it's it's a fast paced at, at the beginning of the legislature session. It's a very fast pace. Um, <laughs> some offices don't you know get sleep. I mean the research office, um, which is the office that is drafting a lot of the legislation um, that will be introduced, um, they're working kind of almost around the clock. I mean uh, you know at this point because there's a lot of bill draft requests. And so legislators and legislative staff are, are very, very busy um, this time. We're not actually in session yet. We're a little less than two weeks away from session, but um, we're almost, it's almost like we're in session already because everybody's gearing up and preparing for session. So it is very busy, um, even in our office. You know, we're getting more calls, getting more requests for, um, uh, for presentations on bill to law or how to use the website or you know, talking to, com communicating with legislators. So, um, so yeah, we're, we're kind of, everybody's kind of gearing up for that. Wow. Wow. Um, so I think we're running close to um, running out of time. Um, did you want to skim through to your, your PowerPoint? Can we pull that up? Um, yeah, real quick. Let's see if they can pull it up. Okay. Okay. So this is the page um, where you would register for an account on the legislature's website. And this, again, this is to use the interactive functions um, to be able to submit testimony and request to testify remotely, um, to sign up for hearing notification and create measure tracking lists. And it's just a form fill. And then once you, um, you know, fill out this form and you get a confirmation email and you click on that, um, you'll be registered. And then once you're registered and you sign in, um, those buttons on the top 
will turn orange and that's how you know you're actually in the website and as you see the red button is how you can submit um, click on to submit testimony and then create um, or sign up for hearing notification with that green button right there um, yeah um, so submitting testimony you know you can upload a file you can type your comments into the box you can also request to testify remotely um, via Zoom. And so that request has to be made via the website. Um, and then that button on the, the right was talking about, this is the uh, reports and list page. And this is the page that, uh, or the tab that Virginia and I use a lot um, in finding information. That's where to go to find all the bills that are introduced this session. Next. Um, and as you see, they have information in various ways. Um, there's also a subject search. So if you don't know the bill number, you can type in a subject um, and the bills that are related to your search um, will come up and then you can keep track of that. Go ahead. Yep. So our office, we're the public office, um, public's office at the state capitol. Um, so people can, uh, you know, use our office. When, our, when the capitol building is open, people are welcome to come up, um, use the public computers uh, for legislative research um, or to go on the website. They can use um, uh, our works. Space and we have recharging devices. Um, we have all, a lot of our informational material here as well. And Virginia and I are here to, here to answer any questions that you may have when you walk in. So please use us as a resource. Um, not a whole lot of people know about us, but the people that know about us use us a lot. And so um, this is pretty much we get we get paid to do this. So sometimes people call and they apologize and don't apologize. We're actually giving us work. Um, we get paid to, to assist the public. So and we're always happy to do to you know to to help out. I mean, um, you know, both of us worked in the legislature prior to coming to par. So, um, you know, we know it's not always easy uh, to understand uh, what happens here at the Capitol. So more than likely, um, the session is going to open, but the Capitol will still be closed. Correct. So, yeah. really, so they can really call you and you can help them navigate even um, the website to find some of the information that they need that they normally would go into the PAR room. Um, or on a normal basis, they could get access into the PAR room. Yeah. So this is our contact information. It's 588-587-0478. That's our, the number to our office. Um, we're also available via email at par at capital.hawaii.gov. Um, we, we have a YouTube channel that um, kind of walks. A lot of um, our presentations are archived uh, on that YouTube channel. And we also have information on how to do different things. We have a website of... Um, lrb.hawaii.gov slash PAR. And if you have enough time to go through the website, you can be really be uh, well-versed on what happens here because we put a lot of information there. And also we uh, have a YouTube, um, sorry, a Facebook page and a Twitter account. So um, we're, we're pretty visible out there. Um, again, uh, use us as a resource. Um, this is what we specialize in and um, you know, this is what we were created for, so. Wow, you're pretty connected. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think we're running um, close to out of time. So Keanu, I really want to thank you and Virginia for doing this um, Condo Insider for us. Um, when the legislator session opens on the 19th, we probably will be doing a email blast out to a lot of our um, the people that we have email addresses for yes. to kind of get them a little bit aware. And then it's going to be posted um, onto our website. Um, as a reminder of that process, of this process. And then, um, so they don't feel intimidated or uncomfortable. It's gonna to start to get them a little bit more, um, feel like that the system is, is user-friendly, right? Um, and um, they really should take advantage of that. So they have, their voice can be heard um, in this legislative process. Absolutely. So any, any closing words, any, um, um, again, it's just it's important for people to get involved just because, like I said, you know, you're keeping demo our democracy healthy. Um, people don't get involved because they don't understand the process, um, but that's not a good enough excuse now that you know that we're available to help um, help you understand uh, how bills become law and you know, help you in your advocacy efforts. So um, please uh, feel free to give us a call or um, <clears throat> contact us via email or on our social media pages, and uh, we'll be happy to assist um we're pretty eager to 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 help out this session yeah like their picture says welcome so mm -hmm. their their doors are open <laughs> okay so thank you very much and i um stay safe um stay mask 
I mean, this COVID is really crazy. So um, stay healthy. And th again, thank you so much for being here today, this afternoon, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great, you're I appreciate welcome. it. Take care.